Right, good afternoon boys. Today we're going to be looking at safety management in terms of the production function. So the first thing we're going to chat about is the factory and machinery safety. The factory must be designed so that the most favorable working conditions can be found. You want to create an area where you are reducing the possibility of risk and injury to any of your workers. And you can do this by supplying protective gear to your employees, making sure that the business is structurally sound and that there is nothing that can harm anyone. Safety in a factory is really, really important, and it falls on the employer's responsibility to ensure that this is looked after. Next, we're going to look at the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Um, often it's just spoken about as the OHSA. So in South Africa, the OHSA prescribes the roles and responsibilities of employers, the employees, manufacturers, suppliers, and sellers. This act requires every business to establish and maintain a safe working environment that minimizes the risk to the safety and health of the workers. The act also outlines the duty and the role of the safety representative of each business. Right, so if you employ more than 50 people in the workplace, you need to appoint a safety officer. The Act specifies that in the event of a dangerous situation in the workplace that cannot be completely eliminated, employees must be informed and precautionary measures must be put in place. All employees must cooperate and must follow the instructions given by the safety representative. Employees are also expected to report any unsafe situations to the safety officer who is responsible for all of that. So in terms of the OHSA, we've spoken about responsibility of the employer to make sure everyone is safe. So let's look at those duties in a little bit more detail. They need to draw up a health and safety policy and communicate it to the employees. They need to provide a safe work environment, including factory safety, safety when working with machinery, and providing protective gear. They need to educate workers regarding health and safety issues by informing them of hazards or fire escapes and emergency procedures. They need to appoint a safety officer who will take precautions for the protection of workers and provide clear instructions and ensure that the workers comply with the Act. They need to display a copy of the OHSA in the workplace and make it visible to all workers. Just a very quick story once, I took a group of kids to the um, Roslyn BMW plant and while we were in the presentation, the fire alarm went off and it was quite remarkable to see how quickly everyone moved and knew where to go and where the assembly points is, were. And I must say my, my pupils were really, really lucky because they got to meet the CEO who was waiting outside as well because of this safety precaution that they were just practicing the fire drills. Let's look at some of the duties of the employee. They have to comply with the regulations of the Occupational Health and Safety Act. They need to wear their protective gear and follow the safety measures as prescribed by the employer. They have to act carefully and not do anything that can put themselves or their fellow employees in danger. They need to report any problems or dangers to supervisors or the employer. So let's talk about the workplace safety policy. The OHSA aims to provide for a safe and healthy working environment for all people in their workplace. Its aim is to establish an advisory council for occupational health and safety. The following OHSA prescriptions are important. Firstly, any factories must comply with the safety measures regarding the protection that is laid down by the OHSA. General safety and conservation of the environment, the pollution of air, emission of poisonous gases and industrial waste must be monitored and controlled by the factory's production manager. The Compensation for Occupational Injuries and Disease Act, or known as COIDA, pays compensation to employees who suffer permanent or temporary disability due to workplace injuries. The Infectious Diseases Act seeks to control the spread of infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS, TB, malaria and now COVID-19. An employer has a responsibility to see that adequate measures are in place to prevent new infections. 
Any employer must have a workplace safety policy in place. The policy must ensure that all employees are properly trained and provided with the necessary safety equipment. The policy must include responsibilities and the mechanisms for reporting the accidents and potentially harmful conditions. Remember that accidents do impact on production, so a safe working environment leads to a greater productivity and lowers the business's costs. And now just for a few visuals, if someone's cleaning the floor, you need to put up a notice saying that it's wet, you need to be careful. If it's a very noisy factory, you need to supply earplugs to all your workers and they must wear them, right? If there's a fire drill or there's a bomb within the factory or any, any business environment, then there needs to be assembly points that are clearly demarcated outside. Emergency exits need to be clearly labeled too. Fire extinguishers, these need to be checked every year, so it's a business's responsibility to make sure that they do this on an annual basis. In terms of protective gear, we can have a look at some of these pictures, gloves, um, steel capped um, shoes, coats with reflections, reflective tape on it so that people can see you, and the reason why they wear orange and yellow is because these colors are bright so you are easily visible. And that's a wrap in terms of safety management. Have a good day.